Is the government looking for ways to control us? Will there be a time where we will be forced to be chipped, tattooed, or even marked with a barcode? With how fast technology is advancing and everything going on around us, it's very possible for the mark of the beast to be some kind of literal chip or physical mark. But is it? There are some that say it is a spiritual mark. Well, let's conduct an unbiased closed examination of the main points the Bible details about the mark of the beast. In this lesson, we will learn about number one, verses that allude to a literal mark. Number two, verses that allude to a symbolic mark. Number three, verses that allude to a literal buying and selling. Number four, verses that allude to a symbolic buying and selling. And number five, a more definitive way of distinguishing what is the mark of the beast. For a more detailed study on this, go to schoolforprofits.tv and watch the movie From America to Babylon. It is only $5.99. It is packed with information about the mark of the beast. Why the number 666? Why is it on the forehead? Why the right hand? Stream it now for $5.99 or go down to the DVD section, buy the DVD. When you purchase the DVD, you will also be able to watch the online streaming version. Details will be in the package. What's up, everybody? My name is Tilla. You guys can follow me on all social media. I do full-time video ministry. So if you guys are blessed by this, please make sure to subscribe. Link is in the description box below. Again, we are talking about the mark of the beast. Is it literal? Is it symbolic? There is a huge debate about this. But without further ado, we're going to go straight into it. Again, we are only going to read what the Bible says. No bias. Revelation 13, verses 16 and 17. Talking about the second beast, it says, He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, if we look at this passage alone, it does seem like the mark of the beast is something literal, like a chip or a barcode. But is it a chip? Is it a barcode? Is it a tattoo? Which one is it? Let's be very objective about this and first notice the very obvious. The words microchip and barcode are nowhere to be found in Revelation 13, 14, 17, you name it. Obviously, these words are nowhere to be found in the Bible at all because these words weren't invented yet when the Bible was written. But does the Bible give us a clue if it is a physical microchip or a barcode or not? So today we're going to take a closer examination word for word what the Bible actually says about this subject. Now, there's a lot of Christians out there that put their own meanings and their own opinions on Scripture. They give us what they think it is and not read what it actually is. Today, we're going to lay aside our opinions and only read Scripture. So I cannot give you my opinion or my interpretation. I'm not going to say I think this and I think that or I believe this or I believe that etc., etc. Only Scripture. Now let's notice the facts. Again, Revelation 13, verse 16. Talking about the second beast, it says, He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or their foreheads. Well, first of all, what is the word mark? Remember, the Bible was written in Hebrew and in Greek. The book of Revelation was written in Greek. Let's see what the word mark means in Greek. The Greek word is karagma. It means a scratch, an etching, a stamp, or a badge of servitude. So then we can say that fact number one, a mark is an imprint, a stamp, a scratch, or an etching, a badge of servitude. Something that lets one know who you serve. A badge of servitude. Fact number two, the second beast causes or enforces everyone to receive this mark according to verse 16 of Revelation 13. We just read that. Fact number three, it is received in a person's right hand or forehead. Revelation 13 verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So fact number four, individuals will not be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. And fact number five, the mark of the beast is connected to the name of the beast or the number of the name of the beast. Revelation 14 verses 9 through 11, it says, 
And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So fact number six, only those who worship the beast and the image of the beast will receive the mark of the beast in their forehead or right hand, and they will be the ones whom God will punish in the end. Fact number seven, those who receive the mark of the beast will have no rest. Interesting. Fact number eight, the mark of the beast is also known as the mark of his name, the beast's name. The mark of the beast is also known as the mark of his name, the beast's name. Important. So again, here are the facts. A mark is an imprint, a stamp, a scratch, or an etching, a badge of servitude, something that lets one know who you serve. It is a sign or signature of the beast's name. That's fact number one. Fact number two, the second beast causes or enforces everyone to receive this mark. Fact number three, it is received in a person's right hand and forehead. Fact number four, individuals will not be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. Fact number five, the mark of the beast is connected to the name of the beast or the number of the name of the beast. Fact number six, only those who worship the beast and the image of the beast will receive the mark of the beast in their forehead or right hand and they will be the ones whom God will punish. Fact number seven, those who receive the mark of the beast will have no rest. Interesting. Fact number eight, the mark of the beast is also known as the mark of the beast's name. So now let's do a more comprehensive analysis. This is where we get a bit more detailed. We are going to ask basic fundamental questions about the mark of the beast, and we're going to take a closer look at these eight facts. We probably won't get to all of them, but we're going to take a closer look at these eight facts and ask about the what, why, when, how, who, and where pertaining to the mark of the beast. So then what is the mark of the beast and who is it for? Just from our careful reading of scripture, we know that the mark of the beast is the sign or signature of the name of the beast. It is a mark that lets us know who are the servants of the beast and who belong to the beast. With the mark, one will be able to tell who among all are the ones who will worship the beast. Only those who worship the beast will receive this mark or signature of the name of the beast in their foreheads and right hand, and those individuals are going to take the mark in order to be able to buy and sell. Now, just from this statement alone, we should have a bunch of questions in our minds already, but we will save them for later. Now, we have just answered the what, the why, and the who. Now, when will this happen? It will happen in these end times. How will this happen? The second beast will enforce it on individuals. Where will this happen? Well, remember Revelation 13 says that the second beast will cause the earth to receive this mark. It will be global, international. Now, here is the million dollar question. Is it a literal mark or is it a symbolic mark? Now, we must look at this honestly as if we are detectives or investigators. We cannot jump to conclusions yet because we have lots of unanswered questions. We cannot yet say that it is a microchip or a barcode that is conjecture. From this study alone, we don't even know who the beast is yet. And so for someone to say it is a microchip would be foolish because then we are jumping to conclusions. It is a lot like looking at a footprint of a cat and saying, this is the print we are looking for, not knowing if we are actually looking for a cat or not. So then we cannot confidently tell people that the microchip is the mark of the beast when we don't even know who the beast is to begin with. 
What if the beast doesn't want to use a, mi a microchip? Is that possible? Yes. It is possible that the beast does not even want to use a microchip or a barcode. How can we be 100% sure that it is a microchip? We are not. It does not say in the Bible. We have to be honest with ourselves. We cannot be 100% sure what the mark of the beast is without first knowing who exactly is the beast. Again, I say this over and over. Searching for the mark of the beast is a lot like searching for the footprint of an animal. You have to know what animal it is you are looking for in order to identify its footprint. So then we have to know who the beast is first before we can identify its mark. Because it is the mark of the beast. It's the mark of the beast. So it's very important for us to know who the beast is first before we identify his mark. But we're not going to talk about the beast right now. We're going to talk about the mark of the beast. And you guys will see how difficult it is to know what is the mark of the beast without first knowing who is the beast. Again, the mark of the beast is a sign or a signature of the name of the beast. Well, what is the name of the beast? You see what I mean? Now it's getting difficult to know what the mark of the beast is because we do not yet know who the beast is. If we cannot even answer this question, then we cannot insert our opinion that it's a microchip or a barcode or a tattoo because what has these things got to do with the name of the beast? So the mark of the beast is the name of the beast that is written or etched on the right hand or the forehead of those who worship the beast. What is worship? Exodus 34 and verse 14 says, For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Deuteronomy 11 and verse 16, Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. So by those two verses, we know that worship can only be towards God or some deity. So if those who have the mark of the beast are worshiping the beast, then they are serving the beast and they think that the beast is a god or god himself. Okay, so now we are getting somewhere. What else does worship mean? Now remember, the Bible was written in Hebrew and in Greek. Let's take a closer look at the meaning of the word worship in Hebrew and Greek. In Hebrew, the word worship is shaka, which means to depress or to prostrate, especially reflexively in homage to royalty or god. In Greek, it is the word proskuneo, which means to fawn or crouch, to prostrate oneself in homage. So then to worship means to bow down or prostrate oneself in obedience to someone or something religiously. It means to religiously obey the commandments of someone. So now we have a couple of leads that we can use to further investigate this subject to see if it really is the microchip RFID or barcode. Whatever the mark is, it has to contain the signature of the name of the beast. And those who receive the mark of the beast has to either believe that the beast is God or some kind of deity, or they have to accept the fact that the beast claims to be God or some kind of deity. Those who have the mark of the beast will also worship the beast, meaning they have to obey the religious mandates of the beast. Does this sound familiar? Revelation 7 verses 1 through 4. Talking about the 144,000. Check out what it says. And after these things, I saw the four angels on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now for those who have not yet studied the subject of who the true children of Israel are, these are not the literal Israelites. Paul says in Romans chapter 2 that those who faithfully keep the commandments of God, no matter what skin color or nationality they are, they are the true Jews. 
He also says in Galatians 3 that there is neither Jew nor Greek to God, but those who are baptized into Christ are Abraham's seed, the true Israelites. So even if you are not physically an Israelite, you can be an Israelite by faith when you are baptized and keep the commandments of God. So anyway, in Revelation 7, we have the 144,000 being sealed in their foreheads. Now let's take a close look at what Revelation 14 has to say about the 144,000 that have the seal of God in their foreheads. It says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an hundred and forty and four thousand, having the Father's name written in their foreheads. Now wait a minute. Those who are sealed in the foreheads have the Father's name in the foreheads. Here's another verse that might shed some more light on this subject. Revelation 3 and verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God. I will write on him the name of my God. Very interesting. Those who have the seal of God on their foreheads also have the name of God on their foreheads, just as those who have the mark of the beast has the name of the beast on their foreheads. It is a parallel. God will write his signature on his people, and the beast will write his signature on his people. God's people are those who worship and obey him and his commandments. The people of the beast will worship him and his religious mandates. Very interesting. Will God literally write his name on his people, or is this a spiritual signature? What does it mean when God writes his name on you? While we are on the subject of names being on the foreheads of individuals in the end times, and particularly in the book of Revelation, there are other entities in this prophetic book in which on their foreheads certain names are written. Take a look at Revelation 13 and verse 1. It says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. The name of blasphemy. So then the first beast himself has the name of blasphemy written on his heads. Now are we looking for a literal beast with seven literal heads, with the literal name blasphemy written on his heads? It's looking a lot more clearly now that this name writing thing in the book of Revelation is symbolic and spiritual, not literal. Revelation 17. Revelation 17 verses 4 and 5 talks about a woman, which is the harlot, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. Again, let's be honest with ourselves. Are we looking for a literal name written on a literal harlot that sits on a literal seven-headed beast? Obviously, the book of Revelation is written symbolically. Let's not get carried away with our own opinions. We have to let the Bible interpret itself. The seal of God is the signature of God's name being written on the forehead of those who worship God. Well, what does it mean to have the name of God being written on our foreheads? Let's think for a minute. When in the Bible does God write his own name? We know that the Bible was written by men as they were moved by the Holy Spirit according to 2 Peter 1 and verse 21. But where in the Bible does God himself, with his own finger, write anything, particularly the signature of his name? Exodus 31 verse 18, talking about the time when God was with Moses on the mountain, says, and he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. These two tables of stone were the Ten Commandments of God that were written by God himself with his own finger. Did he write his name in the Ten Commandments? Yes, he did. In Exodus 20, when God was writing the Ten Commandments, he starts off by saying, I am the Lord thy God. That's his name. I am the Lord thy God. 
Not only that, but God again writes his name in the Ten Commandments seven additional times. Seven additional times. Seven additional times. So then that is a total of eight times that God, with his very own finger, writes the signature of his name, and it is only found in the Ten Commandments. It is only found in the Ten Commandments, where God writes his own signature, the signature of his name, with his own finger, only found in the Ten Commandments. Now, where does God in the Bible write his name on our heads? Hebrews 10 and verse 16. It says, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their inward parts, and in their minds will I write them. Now, wait a minute. Doesn't the law contain God's signature that he writes himself? The law contains God's signature that he writes himself. And Hebrews 10 and verse 16 says, I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds will I write them. God talking, God speaking. He said in our minds, he will write his laws containing his name. So then the Bible says that God will write his 10 commandments, which contain the signature of his name in our minds. That is the forehead. That's the forehead. That would make sense because his signature acts as the mark that keeps count on who keeps his commandments. So then now we know that those who keep the 10 commandments of God will have the signature of God's name in their foreheads. This is a spiritual mark. So if commandment keeping is the thing that cues God to sign his signature on our foreheads and the beasts also have a set of commandments or religious laws or mandates, then we know that those who keep the commandments of the beast and the religious laws of the beast will be the thing that will cue the beast to write his name on the foreheads and right hand of those who worship and obey his laws. Just by studying this, it's really leaning towards a spiritual, symbolic mark and not a literal mark. Now remember, we must not go with our modern language because the Bible is not written that way. We must understand the biblical language. Throughout the Bible, end-time prophecy has always been written symbolically. So using the biblical language when pertaining to the mark of the beast, it's leaning more towards a symbolic and spiritual mark rather than a physical, literal microchip. A literal microchip just is not consistent with the rest of prophecy. So what about the buying and selling? Revelation 13 says that only those who have the mark of the beast are able to buy and sell. Verse 17 says that no man might buy or sell except he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, this is where we get a little bit confused because only those who have the mark of the beast are able to buy and sell. But those who have the mark of the beast directly means they have the name of the beast or the signature of the beast. Remember, the mark of the beast is identified as the signature of the name of the beast, just as the mark of God or the seal of God is identified as the signature of his name. And we also learned that only those who keep the commandments of God have the signature of God's name, and those who keep the commandments of the beast or the religious laws of the beast have the signature or the mark of his name. So then how do we reconcile the problem or the notion that the mark of the beast is a microchip? We can't. It does not say in the Bible. Well, then how will the mark of the beast or keeping the commandments of the beast enable the wicked to buy and sell? That's the question. Is this a literal buying and selling or a spiritual buying and selling? Or is it both? This is where we have to thoroughly study the Bible. We must question everything. We must question everything. We must not leave any stone unturned. Consider this. Revelation 3, verse 18. Jesus Christ is talking to the church of Laodicea. He says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. 
What is this gold tried in the fire that Jesus Christ is selling, counseling people to buy? 1 Peter 1, starting from verse 6, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Peter likens faith to gold being tried with fire. Similar imagery. Similar imagery. Jesus Christ is selling gold tried in the fire, and Peter says faith is the gold that is tried in the fire. Is this a literal buying and selling or a spiritual buying and selling? Do you guys remember when Job's faith was being tried by the fire? Here's what he says. Job 23, starting from verse 8. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. When Job's faith was being tried, he said, I shall come forth as gold. Did he buy that gold that Jesus Christ was selling? Is this a literal transaction? Is this a physical buying and selling? Or is it a spiritual buying and selling? It's a spiritual buying and selling. So if we are dealing with a spiritual or a symbolic mark, then is it a physical buying and selling? A literal buying and selling? Or is it more spiritual than anything? Think about this for a minute. What is the mark of the beast then? What is the mark of the beast? The mark of the beast is directly connected to keeping the commandments of the beast, worshiping the beast. And the mark of the beast is the signature of the beast's name. And you can only get the signature of the beast's name if you worship the beast and obey his commandments. What is the mark of the beast then? This we will not answer today. We will not draw that conclusion here today. This is just to show you guys that our studies need to be more thorough. It needs to be more thorough. If you want this in PDF form, the link is in the description box or in the info card here. Take the PDF file and study this subject even more. This video is only to show you guys how we should study. If you want to learn more about the Mark of the Beast and what it exactly is, please watch the movie From America to Babylon, Making the Mark. It is packed with information about the Mark of the Beast. Why is it in the right hand? Why the forehead? How does it correlate with the number 666? And buying and selling. You can find that movie in the description box below or in the info cards. It is only $5.99, but it is packed with information. Again, guys, this video was only to spark the interest in you guys so that you guys can study this on your own more thoroughly. Thank you guys for watching. Praise God always. What's up, guys? Thank you guys for stopping by schoolforprofits.tv. This is where you can find the movie From America to Babylon exclusively. You can stream it now for a donation of $5.99. The donations are going to go towards the next film, Babylon the Great Whore. If you guys want to help us spread the word, there is a spread the word button here where you can download the trailers for this movie and you can upload them on all social media. If you scroll down, this is where you can watch all of our recent videos. If you scroll down some more, you can donate here. And also, we have more options here for you guys to donate. If you scroll down even more, you can buy clothes, you can buy DVDs, you can buy paintings. And if you want to donate via check, you can do that here too. If you guys have any Bible questions, you can scroll down, you can submit your questions here, you can become an SFP partner here, find out how, and you can also email me here personally if you guys want to. Thank you guys again, praise God always, and I'll see you guys next time. The time is at hand. Please help us spread the word at schoolforprofits.tv. You will find a spread the word button where you can download one minute trailers of this prophecy movie from America to Babylon. 
download the trailers and help us get the message out there by uploading the trailers on all social media. You can do it on Facebook, Twitter, IG, TikTok, and or YouTube, letting everyone know where they can watch this prophecy movie from America to Babylon. You are now a prophecy student. Invite others to class at schoolforprofits.tv. Thank you.